Okay, this is absolutely wild. I've never seen a sea urchin like this before. Must be rush hour. This is wild. <laughs> it definitely has somewhere to be. Never seen one move this fast. Oh my goodness. I, me neither. I've never seen one move this fast. They, they're usually pretty lazy. All I know is that this little urchin looks pretty fabulous. And look at his little legs. It's got some place to be. Oh my goodness. All right, Jordan, let's uh, do some calculations here. How many centimeters per minute? Oh, <laughs> you moving down the seafloor. Definitely a, a four or a five, I yep, would say. I'm, uh, I'm on it. I'm going to bump the camera down so I can get closer to him. You can do the lasers off if you want to uh, while you get imagery. Booking it. And those appendages on top, like what? Yeah. Gotcha. So this is a sea urchin, gotcha. a formosoma, and oh, uh, has okay. these modified tube feet lasers uh, always on top of it. I want to know what down? the function is. <laughs> I would like to know also, um, I'm guessing it's stability, maybe? Oh, they seem somewhat maybe buoyant, but... Uh, Have you ever seen a sea urchin take off the seafloor? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. That would be a surprise. All right, I think he's tired. <laughs> we warm right out. The hundred Our, center. He just arrived at the desk. Like that's yeah. where he wanted to be. That's the destination. <laughs> kind of like me after doing the hundred hundred centimeter dash too. <laughs> <laughs> modified tomb feet though this is just so strange and to see one moving that fast since i've spent a lot of time in intertidal zones like tammy that you know we don't get this with our sea urchins yeah oh yeah sometimes sea stars you find them just moving like really fast it's, it's amazing how they coordinate that all right i think that's it thanks that was fun a hundred centimeter dash. hundred centimeter dash. Some ideas about those modified tube feet. Maybe they contain nasty tasting liquid as a defense mechanism. And then also coming in, a sea urchin is never late, nor, nor are they early. They always arrive wherever they need to be right on time. <laughs> so they're wizards? <laughs> it's definitely a superpower. Magic. This is kind of an interesting thing to think about. Are microplastics being found in corals and sponges in the deep? Um, is anybody see. looking at that? Are they incorporated into the, you know, the deposit and sediment feeding? In the shallows, I know that's definitely been looked at. In the deep, um, I don't know if anyone's actually looked at microplastics in coral, deep water coral tissues. Uh, I'm sure someone's working on it. Uh, or, or it maybe has been published. I'm just not aware of it. So, Steve, did you uh, still want to pop that Niskin? Yeah, whenever you want to. Uh, this looks good in this area. 
Yeah, if you wreck back there, I'll pop it. couple first-time watchers tuning in. Thank you so much and welcome. Thanks for joining us. Turning on porch light too. I don't, I don't need it. No? Oh. Right I now love we porch are so uh, going to take a water sample using one of our Niskin bottles. So that's what you're looking at on the feed. Since some of you are just yeah. joining us, we're a little bit north of Kingman Reef, exploring an unnamed seamount. Moving upslope, characterizing the biological and geological features of this area. So the depth of that was uh, 17, 20 meters. And um, make a note down if you could, that's uh, uh, no corals or sponges in the area control. Yep. Shout out to Steve. Thrilled that you're enjoying the book lists. Thanks for mentioning oh, yeah. it. Kim, yeah, Kim from the Tectonic Turtles. Yep. <laughs> Tectonic Turtles. <laughs> I wasn't on their watch, but it was definitely a... Uh, we were the Tectonic Turtles. It's a blast from the past. <laughs> That's what we were. We were the mighty microbes on oh. our watch. <laughs> Wait, is blast from the past like last year? Like December? Yeah. <laughs> like a couple months ago. <laughs> what did you say you were? So there was the tectonic turtles and the magical microbes. What did you Mighty say? Microbes. Mighty, Mighty microbes. Mighty microbes. So now oh, the alliterations were in the game. That yeah, you got it. You got to alliterate. <laughs> yeah. Tripod fish. Yeah. Tripod. Micro tripod. morning Australia thanks for tuning in question from Australia there seems to be lack of marine snow in this region is that why life is so sparse on the bottom during these dives can you repeat that I was thinking about uh, we can pick up the speed here if you wish uh, yeah what are we doing now half half the vessels not doing anything at the moment yeah, we just completed a move. I was going to ask um, after Argus catches up. Yeah, whatever you need to do to get us to the base of that uh, rise near waypoint nine. Roger. To repeat the question. You could do uh, point five if you want. That might be. Depends if Steve wants to stop and look at stuff or not. I don't think we're going to stop and look at stuff, but kind of like as we've been doing, you know, quick flybys. Roger. Uh, but we're not going to stop and five. sit down anywhere. Bridge now. Five zero meters, bearing zero five zero, and we can increase speed to zero point five knots. Um, I'm trying to find that question again. Why is life so sparse at the bottom during this dive? Is it connected to the amount of marine snow? Yes, uh, likely. Um, but it's also very patchy. So we, we say things are, you know, communities are patchy if, you know, we find a bunch of different species. And you got to kind of limit your speed to one area, but not in others. Out, so in this case, our patch was that rocky you know, hard substrate we explored for the first couple easy hours easy of this watch. It, then you wind up uh, waiting with nothing Not so much in this area so of soft slow and Slowly lateral back and forth if I'm bored. Okay. kind of do lazy S's if you're that bored, but at the moment now we're going to do a long transit, so you'll try and uh, match your speed over ground to the ships. Okay. I kind of bugged Tim again about the uh, get the speed over ground here on the Grafana. Yeah, that'd be useful. Yep. 
almost like watching a tennis match, looking at the two numbers. Yeah. Ship move underway. We're at 0 0.2 knots right now, coming up. towards nine. That will put us, nine will put us at around 1600 meters. You think we'll hit the summit um, during our watch? Uh, not likely. But we have time. Oh. I don't know if we've talked specifically about this. I've got a question coming in about deep sea corals adaptations to survive in the deep. What type of adaptations do deep sea corals have that allow them to make the deep sea their home? Um, you know, many of them, you know, have you know fully evolved within the deep sea, not just adapted. Um, you know, it's an evolutionary process over millions of years that they've uh, gained the power to live in the deep sea, um, but. You know, things like slow metabolism are definitely really important in the deep sea when your food supplies are probably pretty sparse uh, or, you know, you're relying on very carbon poor, poor quality food. Um, you know, a symptom of that is kind of slower growth rates. Um, if, if you don't have a lot of food resources. <laughs> Zoom in on Zeus, Tammy. Yeah. Speaking about food resources. <laughs> I feel like we need to turn this movement into a TikTok dance or something. Oh my god. <laughs> Get called, Jamie on it. Called it the holothuroid. So, sea cucumber, correct? Thanks, right. Jamie. Based. You need tactile controls. Don't want more web based stuff. If you want to get nice adjustments. Full wide, Timmy. Thank you. you. Can push in past the magnum. Bye. Uh, you can push in. I just wanted to get oriented.
question coming in from Long Island, New York, about coral polyps. When coral polyps are released, I think this has to do like with their reproduction, do they have a limited time to find something to attach to? Yes, they do. Um, so when the larvae are released, uh, uh, well, in the case of broadcast spawners, when the larvae are fertilized, uh, or when the eggs are fertilized and turn into larvae, um, they, you know, not really well known for all the species, but let's say approximately 30 to 40 days usually um, before they're fully competent and can settle. Um, that's the maximum time. Most of them might not take that long to settle, but uh, still, uh, yeah, they have at least that long before they uh, expire. Sometimes for uh, for brooded larvae, it might be a little bit longer. Um, you know, these are larvae that uh, develop in the tissues of the polyp for a little bit more time than um, than broadcast spawners, uh, and uh, they'll often um, yeah, just kind of emerge and crawl out and uh, settle some usually nearby, uh, but not always. Would you put bubble on front porch, please? Okay. Go ahead, Bridge. Brad. Roger, thank you. Lost station. Uh, some strong wind is coming, but she thinks we'll be able to hold station if we wanted to, or we can. Let me see if we can keep going. Bridge nav. Are we able to continue going with a five meter step, zero five zero? Sure. Roger. So we're gonna hold station here and let the squall pass. Yeah, it's up to 30 knots. Wanna zoom in on the shrimp, Tammy? Bye. Bye. <laughs> Question coming in from Mississippi. I'm wondering if any species swim into the sample boxes and come up with the ROVs. Do we get any surprises sometimes um, after we've recovered the ROV surprise samples? I've seen a fish come up in the frame, just not in the sample box. <laughs> we get lots of surprise samples. Leftover, leftovers. It's usually uh, quite the collection if there's any uh, budding geologists or biologists on the on the ROV team they crawl over that vehicle and find all kinds of treasures. They get stuff out of the slurp hose, there's stuff in the grate on the front of the uh, of the vehicle. It can be bits of rock or slimy stuff or Nav, what's our transit time in uh on these moves, what have we been doing? Like uh, point 0.2 or point 0.3? Uh, yeah, point 0.2. Okay. Can you um, do a quick calculation for me? Sure. And uh, see if we were to move at point 0.2, assuming consistent pace from now through the end of waypoint. Uh, 10. Good time to practice your take? landings. Okay, waypoint 10. Yeah. Yeah, stand by. 